Many homeowners find that some of the rooms in their houses are hotter than others during the day. This is often due to the orientation of the walls. South-facing walls tend to get warmer than north-facing ones, for example. The same is true for east and west-facing walls, depending on which side of the house the sun is on. This can be a problem for the bedrooms that are located on the south side of the house. Today, I want to talk about a few ways to mitigate this problem. HVAC technicians ask themselves an important question when diagnosing problems. What has changed since before you noticed this increase in the heat load and after? Because that's likely the issue. Focus on trying to find out the problem and start from there. There are several ways that a south-facing room or house can end up scorching hot in the summer. Faulty ductwork, poor duct design, low insulation levels, lack of shade, ineffective windows, the age of the house, and the color of the house. Let's talk about faulty ductwork first. So if I were called out to a house where the homeowner was concerned about excessive heat in the house's bedroom or living room, I would check the ductwork first. And I would make sure that the ducts are straight, not bent or kinked, restricting the airflow. I would also check the duct's vapor lining on the outside and make sure that it's not torn or melted. I also want to make sure that there's good to decent duct insulation. That way it can maintain the temperature as it heads towards the room that the duct leads to. If the airflow is kinked or pinched, or the duct has been cut open, then obviously the air would have a harder time getting to the room. Sometimes electricians, plumbers, cable technicians, and homeowners themselves have to work up in the attic or under the house, wherever the duct work is. And those folks have been known to step on a duct and crush it. Under houses, people may have to belly crawl over a duct or under a duct to access one of their projects. And a duct, whether it be flexible or hard pipe, can be crushed or bent so much that it prevents the air from moving onto the room that they're complaining gets too warm. There's no need to start fixing other things on this list if the ductwork isn't in good shape. The material or the film on the outside of the flexible ductwork is called the vapor barrier or vapor lining. It stops condensation from forming and then dripping down onto the sheetrock or wood ceiling. After many years, vapor barriers will start to shred or start falling apart due to heat and exposure to light coming in from decorative attic windows. The same is true for insulation that's wrapped around the duct. If it's not covering the duct as it came from the manufacturer, then the heat from the attic will absorb into the conditioned air inside of the duct, and that can make the air warmer as it reaches the room. As I've discussed before, the difference between the temperature of the air going into the room and the temperature entering the return air grill that's in the hallway is about 18 to 22 degrees. If one room is getting a low temperature difference compared to the other rooms in the house, then that's something to focus on. While you're there, go ahead and check the design and flow of the ductwork. Are the ducts strapped or lying on the attic's joist in a straight line? They should also be run with long bends in them too, as opposed to short bends. But you're trying to avoid having a duct that looks like a roller coaster going up and down and twisting all over the place. The path of least resistance is the most efficient way for air to travel through the ductwork. It may not be designed efficiently, it's not necessary to change your ductwork every time you replace your HVAC system, but if it's older than 30 years, it could be time to start thinking about it. Another thing you want to check out when you're inspecting that ductwork is the actual insulation level above the room. Years ago, we installed a system in a house that was being rebuilt. When we installed it, the house wasn't finished yet, and a few years later, he called us out during the summer to say that he felt like his south-facing office wasn't cooling as well as it should be. When we checked the ductwork out, we realized that the builders hadn't insulated the ceiling above his office, so there was no barrier resisting the hot air in the attic mixing with the cooler air in the office. Once the room had been insulated above it, the room performed a lot better. Next, let's talk about shading on the house. Considering the sun in the northern hemisphere spends its days beaming in from the south all day, south-facing rooms see a ton of sunlight. Compare that to the north-facing walls that see so little sunlight that moss could actually grow on them. Wouldn't it be nice to get some shade on the house's south side? It's not going to help this year or even over the next five years, but a nice broad-leafed tree, like maybe a maple tree, 
will absorb the sun's rays, preventing them from hitting the southern walls of the house. Consider adding enough shade trees to that side of the house. In several years, your house will start performing better and you'll be helping the environment at the same time. Ineffective windows. Now, I'm not a window contractor, but I do consider the performance of the windows when sizing a system or ductwork for a house. If the windows are older single pane windows with that metal trim around them, they're gonna let in more heat into the room. Double and triple pane windows will block the sun's UV rays much better, keeping the rooms cooler and longer into the day. Older windows can accumulate condensation on them easier than the newer ones. And that's because there tend to be more gaps in single pane windows with that metal trim. Air gaps are the biggest culprits in forming condensation on your windows. That condensation forms because air gaps around the seams of the windows allow the cool air inside to mix with the hot air outside of your house. So if this happens in your house, it might be time to consider upgrading the windows. Next, let's talk about the age of the house. Houses built before the 1990s don't withstand the extreme heat fluctuations throughout the year as newer homes. Now it seems like every three years when the updated building code is released, homes are required to meet more stringent energy efficiency standards than the previous version. We see houses on the north side of Sacramento that were built around the now retired McClellan Air Force Base that don't perform as efficiently as houses in that same area built more recently. Again, combination of windows, ductwork, and insulation are installed with more efficient materials than those in the previous decades. Not to worry though, just do a little DIY insulation, hire a good contractor to upgrade the HVAC system, and all the other things that are discussed in this blog, and you'll be set up to better handle the sun beaming down on your south facing walls. And finally, let's talk about the paint on the house. One more thing to consider on the south facing walls is the type of paint that you use. Not only do dark colored homes absorb more heat, but they also tend to show wear faster than lighter colors. White paint is ultimately going to reflect the most. In fact, in an article written on southernliving.com, they discussed a paint that was scientifically formulated to reflect 98.1% of solar radiation while keeping the surface of the wall cooler. They cited Purdue University researchers who claimed the paint is so good at its job that covering a thousand square feet of a roof could result in a cooling power of 10 kilowatts, which is more powerful than the air conditioners used by most houses. Guinness World Records says that that paint is also recorded as the brightest, whitest paint ever produced. And even though some of this high performing paint isn't quite ready for the market yet, there are some really good reflective paints out there right now. Discuss it with a reputable painting contractor to find the best paint for your house to keep those south facing walls performing better for you. If important rooms of the house face south, you're going to want to take extra precautions to keep it cooler in the summer. Make sure your ductwork is well maintained and properly designed. Make sure your insulation levels are high enough. Install window shades or film on your windows. Make sure those windows are in good condition and consider painting your house a lighter color. These steps can help make your home more comfortable during the hot summer. And of course, if you need Fox Family to come out and take a look at this, please feel free to contact us on our website or you can call in. So what are some other things that people can do to make their south facing rooms cooler? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.